Hello again, everybody. Uh, this will be another case study. Here we're going to be talking about a patient with irritability and how we're going to differentiate that and manage it. If you haven't had the opportunity yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description in the video or on the I button on the upper right hand corner. Uh, I really appreciate all the uh, contributions I can get help offset the cost of putting these videos together. So thank you very much in advance for your consideration. So this is a pretty long vignette, but I want you to pay attention and um, try to uh, focus on uh, some of the things that make this patient unusual. This is kind of an interesting case here. So we got a 20-year-old man presenting to the ED after being stopped by police on the highway for speeding. Due to his argumentativeness and unusual behavior, he was taken to the hospital where he was met by his parents. His parents say that for the last couple weeks, he's been uncharacteristically argumentative and has hardly been sleeping, spending hours late into the night writing two novels and an autobiography. You probably know where this is going. He's also been missing his college courses over the last two weeks. The patient says he's fine and that he was just driving to meet his third hookup of the week that he found online. His mother says that this is out of character and ordinarily he's reserved. Efforts by his parents to understand his recent change in thinking and behavior have been met with loud and rambling discourses and he angrily accuses them of wanting him to stay, quote-unquote, subjugated by the tyranny of depression. The patient needs to be cut off when he talks as he rambles and changes topics quickly. Past medical history includes major depressive disorder, which has been treated with sertraline by his psychiatrist. Family history significant for schizophrenia and his brother. Patient is a student, denies alcohol, tobacco, and drug use. Medications include sertraline. Vitals are within normal limits. What are we going to do for a physical exam on this patient? So we'll probably keep this pretty focused because he's in the ER. Uh, no apparent distress, lungs cleared to auscultation, heart, regular rate and rhythm, no murmurs, abdomen soft, non-tender, non-distended, normal bowel sounds, neurologically no focal deficits, and then his psych exam is as shown. Okay, so what is our differential? Well, this is a patient with apparent mania. So there are a number of things that we need to consider. We're going to consider both bipolar diagnoses. Bipolar 1 is manic. Bipolar 2 is hypomanic. We'll talk about the difference between the two. Schizoaffective disorder, which is essentially schizophrenia with mood swings. Mood disorder due to general medical condition. Always have to rule out general medical conditions when you've got a patient with acute psychiatric presentation. And then substance intoxication. Ditto. Got to rule out substances. All right, so our initial workup is going to be to get routine labs, and then we want to rule out hyperthyroidism. Hyperthyroidism can cause mania. So pretty much with any psychiatric diagnosis, you're going to check the thyroid because hyperthyroidism can trigger mania. Hypothyroidism can trigger depression. Okay, so you got to rule that out. And then, of course, we're going to get a urine drug screen. I mean, this guy is off the wall, so we, we got to check his urine. And what we find is that our labs are normal, and the urine drug screen shows cannabinoids. What is that? That's marijuana. Does marijuana cause this? Mm-mm. Marijuana is super common. You see this come up all the time. You do a urine drug screen, patient comes up, marijuana doesn't really mean anything. It's legal in a lot of places now. So this is our mnemonic for mania. You've probably heard of this. Um, so this is the dig fast mnemonic. What I want you to pay attention to though is this right here. So when you've got a patient that satisfies the criteria for mania, you need to know whether there is impairment in their ability to function. And so um, what we know from this patient is that he was pulled over by cops. He was arguing with the cops. That is a big deal. You can get into legal problems. Okay, so this we would consider this marked impairment, and this would therefore be a manic episode. 
If he wasn't pulled over by cops, maybe brought in by his parents for acting a little weird, maybe we would consider it hypomania. There's also a difference between mania and hypomania as far as how long this has been going on. Hypomania can be as little as four days. Mania has to be at least a week. So this is uh, pulled straight from DSM-5-TR. Our management with a patient with a diagnosis of bipolar 1 disorder in an active manic episode is going to be antipsychotics. Now you probably have heard all sorts of different approaches to treatment. Can we use benzodiazepines? Maybe. Can we use different atypical antipsychotics? Can we use mood stabilizers? Can we use lithium? And you're going to find a lot of sources um, that disagree. I talk to psychiatrists at my institution and they generally agree that an atypical antipsychotic in the emergency room would be an appropriate approach. In particular, what I have found is that the psychiatrists prefer olanzapine or Zyprexa. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to give an atypical antipsychotic. We're going to consult psychiatry for evaluation for inpatient management. This patient is not stable, so we will have psychiatry come down and take a look at him and evaluate him. Ultimately, he's going to need to be followed up with long-term management, and he's going to need to be on a mood stabilizer. So they're going to stop the Zoloft and probably put him on lithium. Common differentials, really the big one is bipolar 1 versus bipolar 2. We kind of talked about that. Schizoaffective disorder is a mood disorder with a history of psychotic manifestations outside the mood symptoms. So maybe they're in normal mood and they're having psychotic um, manifestations. Whereas if you've got a patient who's bipolar and they're only experiencing the psychosis when they're manic or when they're depressed, we would call that bipolar with psychotic features. So a little bit different. Hyperthyroidism, we would expect systemic features. Frontotemporal dementia can cause impulsivity and personality changes, but this is more chronic and they tend to have speech problems, hyperorality. This is definitely something that you would more see in older people. Cocaine abuse and amphetamine abuse both can, can cause symptoms identical to mania, but it's going to come up on that uh, drug screen. So to recap, when evaluating for a psychiatric disorder, always rule out general medical conditions and drug intoxications first. So you get a TSH and a urine drug screen. You may or may not include a head CT. It wasn't necessary in this patient. Hyperthyroidism and drugs can cause symptoms consistent with mood anxiety and or psychotic disorders. Bipolar 1 has mania that impairs functioning. Bipolar 2 has hypomania that does not. Both will have a history of depression. Long-term treatment, though, is going to be the same. Long-term bipolar is managed by psychiatry, but you should know how to manage patients acutely, and that's going to be with an immediate atypical antipsychotic and involuntary hospitalization if the patient is in, in imminent danger to themselves or to others. Long-term, they'll be managed outpatient by psychiatry with mood stabilizers, usually lithium or Tegretol or something like that.